guitar picks with Ron Harvey. Bo Carter or Honey? Bo Carter, uh, one of my all-time favorites in this genre. He's created a whole style of his own, but he's a little bit more uptown than the Sun House and Charlie Patton. He actually was a member of a group called the Mississippi Sheiks, which was a very popular recording group during that time and played what has been referred to, I guess, more as, as Holcomb music, which is kind of a combination of the black music of the time and also the white music of the time. And he played at, at white dances and black dances and made a great living as a entertainer and as a musician. He recorded uh, under the name Bo Carter. His real name uh, was Artemer Chapman, and uh, he was part of the famous Chapman family. And he recorded her Bo Carter and didn't really perform much as Bo Carter, but just recorded songs and kind of created this unique style with a lot of different strange open tunings and nobody plays quite like him and nobody really plays in that style anymore today but uh, I really really enjoy it there's a certain Al Jolson influence mm -hmm. yeah, on the scene, yeah. which is something that you had brought up earlier mm -hmm. and uh, I just feel that this guy doesn't get the credit he deserves as being a major major artist he lived into the 50s uh, he died in the middle 50s uh, a blind man at that point and couldn't even play his music anymore and kind of died in obscurity in Memphis. These men were products of their times. I mean, the music that was popular in that time, uh, beyond these these race recordings, which is just a, a limited to the black population in the South, that's the only people that bought these records. Uh -huh. Gail Dean Wardlow is a man that kind of went around and searched out this music throughout the uh, 1960s with, and he would go to the houses and ask for the lady of the house because it was found that the lady of the house would be the one that did the buying of these records and would often be the person in the 1920s and 30s that actually would you know, buy the, the, the 75 cent records, which were very expensive at that time. And they may still have a collection and he would offer them money for it in the 60s and they would sell them as records. But they listened to everything. They listened to the you know, Dixieland swing music, the Al Jolson music, uh, the piano rags of the time. So there was a, a lot of different kinds of music around, but these were blues artists and they were targeting a certain market, but they had their influences. And you, you, couldn't, you can't remove them from the times totally. Mm -hmm. It's not just plantation work song music. It's also influenced by the music of the era.